The Vietnam War was fought during the Cold War from 1955 to 1975 between the Democratic Republic of Vietnam or North Vietnam, supported by China and the Soviet Union against the Republic of Vietnam, or South Vietnam, supported by the United States and other allied countries. This conflict represents the greatest military defeat in US history, creating a profound trauma that still endures. Known as the Vietnam Syndrome. During World War II, the French colony of Indochina, composed of present-day Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos, was occupied by the Empire of Japan until its final defeat in 1945. The war showed that the Europeans, and in particular the French, were not invincible. This led to a wave of liberation movements throughout the former European colonies in Asia and Africa, including Indochina. On the other hand, the new binary order that emerged in the Cold War, where the United States and the Soviet Union, along with their respected allies, were fighting for world dominance, would lead to increased military interventions by both sides in order to expand their respective spheres of influence. France tried to maintain its colonial status in Indochina after the surrender of Japan, but the leader, Ho Chi Minh, in command of a group of communist and nationalist forces called the Viet Minh, declared the Democratic Republic of Vietnam on the 2nd of September 1945. After the failure of negotiations between France and Ho Chi Minh, the French army bombed the city of Haiphong, starting the Indochina War, 1946 to 1954. After a lengthy war, the French colonial army was defeated at the Battle of Dien Bien Phu in May 1954. Subsequently, the Geneva Conference took place between April and July of the same year. At this conference, the independence of Laos and Cambodia was agreed. The issue of Vietnam was more complicated. Finally, it was decided to divide Vietnam into two states, divided along the 17th parallel. North Vietnam, a communist state with its capital in Hanoi, and South Vietnam, a capitalist state with its capital in Saigon. Furthermore, both sides agreed to a referendum that was to take place in their respective states in 1956, with the aim of either approving their reunification or finalizing definitive separation. But before that referendum, in 1955, South Vietnam chose its model of state. After an election with a somewhat suspicious result, it chose to be a republic, with Ngoc Dien Diem at its head. He led the Republic of Vietnam, turning it into an authoritarian state. He did this with his younger brother, Ngoc Dien Nu, and his brother's wife, Tran Li Xuan. Both the leaders of Saigon and the administration of US President Eisenhower were reluctant to hold the reunification elections scheduled at the Geneva Conference of 1954. For fear of electoral fraud in the Communist North, the agreed-upon referendum would not be held. Very soon, the government of Ng Ding Diem became extremely unpopular because of the enormous corruption and the weak identity of South Vietnam as a country. The problems of the Geneva Conference began to be palpable, and that is why artificial divisions made with square and bevel are almost always a disaster. Why? Because South Vietnam was played by communists, who organized themselves by creating a resistance movement called the National Liberation Front of Southern Vietnam, or FNL also known as the Viet Cong, which operated as a fifth column. This movement would receive aid in the form of supplies and weapons from the communist government of North Vietnam in order to fight the government of South Vietnam, which was, in effect, a puppet state of the United States. The war between South and North Vietnam began on the 1st of November 1955 with small armed clashes, but it wasn't until 1959 that former members of the Viet Minh, together with Buddhist monks, peasants, and other groups, began to structure the Viet Cong, with the firm objective of overthrowing the Ngat Ding Diem government and reunifying the entire country. Their tactic was guerrilla warfare, which had brought them numerous successes against the French colonial army. The North Vietnamese government began sending supplies to the Viet Cong by sea and the Ho Chi Minh Trail, a set of paths and roads that stretched from North Vietnam to South Vietnam via neighboring Laos and Cambodia. 
On the other side, the South Vietnamese army was behaving in an undisciplined manner due to ineptitude and corruption of its officers. In November 1963, leader Ngut Ding Diem and his brother were killed in a coup d'etat carried out by the chief of staff of the South Vietnamese army, Duong Van Minh. After this event, there was a succession of very unstable governments in South Vietnam. From 1964, the North Vietnamese army began to take advantage of the conflict. This army would also have the help of the Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China, who provided them with training and modern weaponry. For the communist leader, Ho Chi Minh, reunification would take place sooner or later, if not through a referendum, then it would be through armed combat. Americans worried that if South Vietnam fell into the hands of the communists in the north, the rest of Asia would follow in a domino effect. They needed to find a way to enter the war directly. Their opportunity came in 1964 after the Gulf of Tonkin incident. On the 2nd of August 1964, the US warship USS Maddox encountered three North Vietnamese patrols 28 miles off North Vietnam without causing any US casualties. Two days later, a false operation between North Vietnamese and US ships was used to give President Lyndon B. Johnson a pretext for entering the Vietnam conflict. An attack from the North Vietnamese Navy was simulated in order to favor a casus belli that would justify entering the war fully. On 7th of August 1964, President Johnson obtained the Gulf of Tonkin resolution from the United States Congress, which empowered him to carry out any military intervention against the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. In March 1965, Operation Rolling Thunder was conducted, a massive bombing aimed at destroying North Vietnamese communications and industry to prevent supplies from being sent to the Viet Cong. Also, the first US Marine landings would take place at the Da Nang Air Base, joining existing advisors in South Vietnam. In turn, President Johnson launched the so-called Many Flags campaign, an initiative to bring all his allies into the fight against the enemy. Six countries sent soldiers, war material and supplies, while about 30 countries allied with the United States provided logistical support. A few months later, the US Army launched Operation Starlight and succeeded in cornering the Viet Cong. In turn, they would face the North Vietnamese Army for the first time in the Ia Drang Valley. These successes paved the way for General William Westmoreland, Commander-in-Chief of US military operations, to request the maintenance of Operation Rolling Thunder and the use of the helicopter as a weapon of war, thus increasing the actions of the Special Forces with the aim of attacking the enemy in their own territory. By the end of 1965, there were more than 100,000 military personnel available in Vietnam. In the first year of the war, the United States dominated the battlefield thanks to its firepower and the use of the helicopter, which made them mistakenly think it would be a quick victory against North Vietnam. The United States conducted Operation Market Time to reinforce the South Vietnamese Navy. In turn, it was decided to use Agent Orange to destroy the ground cover that helped protect the positions from which the enemy was attacking. Despite these tactics, by 1966, the number of victories had been reduced and US casualties had increased significantly. General Westmoreland called for more troops and the massive use of artillery and aircraft through the use of B-52 bombers. South Vietnam managed to regain some territory. In response, the North Vietnamese army began to use the element of surprise through guerrilla ambushes against the US Army, avoiding open-air confrontations. It also carried out the construction of tunnels in order to hide easily. The Ho Chi Minh Trail, which was key to securing supplies to the Viet Cong, was expanded and reinforced, despite multiple US efforts to destroy it. All of these actions ended up damaging American morale. Ho Chi Minh's words would end up being prophetic. You will kill 10 of our men, and we will kill one of yours, but in the end, you will tire of it first. On January 21st of 1968, the siege of Khe San combat base by North Vietnamese and Viet Cong forces took place. The base was under siege for 77 days, resulting in one of the bloodiest battles of war. General Westmoreland decided to use all the resources necessary to maintain the base. 
However, the base would be abandoned due to the disastrous situation it was facing. At the end of January 1968, while celebrating the Vietnamese New Year, the Tet Offensive took place, one of the most symbolic episodes of the war. The North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong carried out this long and brutal offensive. 38 of South Vietnam's 52 provincial capitals were attacked, and its capital, Saigon, was under siege. Even the US Embassy itself was attacked by a group of fighters. From that moment on, American morale plummeted as the attacks had caught them completely off guard. Soon after, the US Air Force managed to recover the lost territory, although, by then, many military were already aware of the impossibility of winning the war quickly. On the other hand, the brutal massacre of the people of Mai Lai, which had taken place in March 1968, was made public in 1969. This and many other excesses would give rise to a strong feeling of rejection and the loss of public support. Americans wondered what they were doing in Vietnam. After the Tet Offensive, President Johnson knew that public opinion was against him and chose not to run for re-election. At that time, there were about 500,000 US troops in Vietnam. A change in strategy was needed. Analyst Henry Kissinger argued for a process of Vietnamization, which had the objective of strengthening the South Vietnamese army. In other words, it would be the South Vietnamese themselves who would defend their own land and risk their own men. In January 1969, Richard Nixon was sworn in as the President of the United States. Nixon wanted a progressive withdrawal of troops to maintain financial and armed support to South Vietnam to negotiate an honorable peace with North Vietnam and not to extend the bombing to other countries. However, in March 1969, bombings were carried out over Laos and Cambodia through the so-called Operation Menu. These two countries were key to the maintenance of the Ho Chi Minh Trail, and in May, the Battle of Hamburger Hill, a bloodbath where the United States won a Pyrrhic victory, took place. Nixon had no choice but to announce the first withdrawal of troops from South Vietnam. In 1970, the South Vietnamese Army carried out operations in Cambodia, and the following year, Operation Lam Sun 719 was launched in Laos to try and cut off the Ho Chi Minh Trail. However, the determination of the North Vietnamese Communist Army under the command of General Vo Ong Gan Giap remained unrelenting. Between March and October 1972, the North Vietnamese Army launched the Easter Offensive, a major attack aimed at wearing down the South Vietnamese enemy and regaining territory. In response, Nixon decided to employ Operation Linebacker, a massive bombing raid aimed at mining ports, destroying railroads, oil facilities, airfields and docks throughout North Vietnam. This was followed by another maximum effort bombing campaign, Operation Linebacker 2. These campaigns did not alter the course of the war, but would succeed in forcing peace negotiations with North Vietnam. Finally, on the 27th of January 1973, the signatories of North Vietnam, South Vietnam, the United States, and the National Liberation Front of Southern Vietnam, or Viet Cong, signed the Paris Peace Accords. These agreements included the implementation of a ceasefire, the withdrawal of US troops from Vietnam within 60 days, the exchange of prisoners, the holding of elections in South Vietnam, and the clearance of northern ports. The United States did its part, and on the 29th of March 1973, the last US soldiers left Vietnam. But the war didn't end there. After the US retreated, South Vietnam found itself alone in its fight against North Vietnam. Hanoi was prepared to deal the final blow. The North Vietnamese Army launched its attack through the 1975 Spring Offensive that ended in April of that year. On the 30th of April 1975, the North Vietnamese Army took the city of Saigon, ending the Republic of South Vietnam. The Long War was over. The Vietnam War was one of the most significant conflicts of the Cold War, given its almost 20-year duration and the huge deployment of forces and weapons used by both sides, making it one of the bloodiest wars in history. 
the victory of the North Vietnamese army would bring about the eventual reunification of the country in 1976. During the Vietnam conflict, the United States counted 58,000 dead, more than 300,000 injured, 2,000 missing, as well as thousands of ex-service people with disabilities or drug addictions, or with serious problems adapting to civilian life. The South Vietnamese army was left with 250,000 dead and 1,170,000 wounded. Media coverage of the Vietnam War made it the first televised conflict in history. The role of the media was key in the growing public awareness of US military intervention. The rejection of an unnecessary and unjust war spread both within and outside the United States, favoring the spread of the hippie movement with its ideals of pacifism and free love. On the other hand, the military defeat left much of the population ashamed of the defeat condemning American society to a traumatic period marked by pessimism and cynicism. The triumphant North Vietnamese army, along with the Viet Cong forces, would end the war with 1,100,000 dead and 600,000 wounded in their ranks. At the same time, more than 2 million Vietnamese civilians were killed during the conflict. After the war, the Vietnamese environment was profoundly damaged by the intensive use by the US Army of defoliants like Agent Orange and flammable fuels like napalm. This would cause considerable damage to the agriculture, as well as countless cases of miscarriages and congenital malformations, respiratory problems and cancer in the Vietnamese population. After the fall of Saigon, the Pathet Lao communist movement, with the support of the Soviet Union and the North Vietnamese army, overthrew the monarchical government in Laos and established the Lao People's Democratic Republic in 1975. During the Vietnam War, Laos was heavily bombed by the US, with 2 million tons of bombs dropped, killing about 200,000 people. The communist victory in Vietnam was used by the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia to take control of Phnom Penh on 17th of April 1975. The regime of terror established by Pol Pot until 1979 known as Democratic Kampuchi, caused the death of between 1.6 and 3 million people, about a third of the population, in what came to be known as the Cambodian Genocide. The Vietnam War ended up being mythologized in the cinema on many occasions. Apocalypse Now, Platoon, Born on the 4th of July, Full Metal Jacket, Heaven and Earth, The Deer Hunter, and leaving an indelible mark on the memory of humanity as a reminder of the atrocities that can be perpetuated by human beings.